So we have our side eave. What about our front eave or our end eave? So we're referencing currently one of our sections. Now let's have a look at the other one. This is the side and this is the front. So this is the one that we want to reference. So when we go to our detail, we can do this on a different detail or we can do this in the same place. Let's do it in the same place. We'll just show the other detail. So right click, show as trace reference. And so we're just going to drag this across just over here to the side so we can see this in the other direction. Just take a bit of it, I don't need quite so much. And I'll use that as a reference. It's a little bit hard to see with the true line weight on, so let's turn that off. Drag. Great. And yes, the outside line does not line up with the wall. That's because the existing wall does not have battens. And so what we're doing here is adding a batten to it, which is going to make it considerably thicker. Right, so this is mostly correct, but now we need to edit it to be able to explain its real relationship, and we see that this roof is nowhere near thick enough, so we're going to need to make that change as well. Let's move this up, and when we drag this up, where do we want it to sit? We want the relationship of this point to be slightly cutting through our rafter, so the rafter is going to be notched. Now a lot of this information is not going to be relevant or needs to be edited, so we'll have to move that down. If we're not sure, sometimes I find it's easier just to drag stuff away, because sometimes if there's too much information in the way, it can get very tricky and hard to understand. So this is our rafter, this is our rafter height, but the problem is in this instance that the rafter's in the wrong orientation. So just like before, we're basically copying this information so where we could, rather than having to redraw it, just do that. So I will leave a rafter here, just so I don't get confused. I'll move it to the side, so I understand how tall that needs to be. And I will move, or I'll draw, redraw this roof sheeting based on this new profile height. And I'll move that to the side, so I'm creating bits. I'll take my ceiling batten and I'll drag it down so it's now underneath my rafter, which will have to change colors because this is now running in this direction. And then I need my roof batten, which we see is running in the other direction. So again, I'll go back up here and copy this one and I want to copy the insulation while I'm at it. So I'll copy a whole bay drag it down and rotate it so it is flat to begin with and then we can change the angle a bit later. It's a lot easier to work on this stuff while it's flat. So we can basically get rid of that. I'll move that one up here and stretch this one. And now we're starting to get in the right place. Let's move this down so it's aligned where it should be. and we're on our way. Alright, now that all of that's there, we can delete some of this information. We'll take this insulation and copy it across because it's supposed to be there. Nothing else really should. I could keep this flashing if I wanted to, or capping if I wanted to. I can delete the rest, and then I can move the rest into place. Now my plasterboard lining will also need to move, so I'll drag it across here just to make sense of what we're talking about. Now let's stretch it to make it all longer. Copy another batten across to the end, and then let's make this the, the outside edge. And of course I need to do this with my internal ceiling joists as well. But I won't cut that or de determine its exact location until I have a better understanding of the angle. So let's rotate 
I'll rotate based on my reference, that's the smartest way to work. Two degrees. And like I said, I'll move this so it is being cut, my pitching plate, outside point of my top plate. So there. Great, that's in place. Now I can start trimming and extending and making everything work like it should. So we need to extend all of this so it reaches all the way out to this outside edge. So let's stretch all these out. And again, I can make them longer if I want to, and then I can, of course, trim it back later if I'm uncertain. To stretch this longer, I'll use the outside edge first. Now I have, it's very important to me that I'm using ceiling joists on the inside, but I definitely do not need ceiling joists on the outside. So once I get to my outside edge, let's just move this one all the way through to here, and then trim this. This will have to come down, so that's touching. And I'll offset this. Let's do 450. And 900. I could have used multiply, but that's fine. And with these top parts, my battens and insulation. Let's start from the end, get that nicely aligned where it should be, basically there. And then deselect that last one so I've got a repeating pattern and drag some copies, drag multiple copies. I have to delete that duplicate, but that's fine. And there. So let's just delete that double up. Great. So that's nearly all my bits. I want to duplicate this wall cladding. And in this case, that's going to become my Safit lining. And I need to rotate that to the same angle as the roof rafter. And in this instance, it's not 9 millimeters, but 6. So let's use the offset edge, 3 millimeters to make that thinner. And we'll extend this the whole way back through. Now, how do I want this to terminate? Let's move this down a touch. What I can do in this instance. is to allow down another millimeter or two, allow this to run past, and allow a shadow gap here. So let's do five millimeters, and I could cork that if I wanted to. How do I finish? I need some type of a fascia or barge capping. I can use something standard, or I can customize that. Didn't work very well, did it? Let's do that again. I want to make that a vertical cut. So let's at the moment just do something a little bit whimsical. And fold it back. And of course when it's going down into the, the roof sheeting, what I'm actually wanting that to do is to change to be dashed. Now I don't need all of this end, so I can delete anything that's too far away, and I can hide, use a fill to hide any extra which I don't want to see. 
So this is a, a large overhang, so of course we'd need to make sure that that rafter is structurally capable of having such a large overhang, but we see that that's what's happening in the real life situation. And effectively, we've remodified all of the elements using exactly the same parts. The only thing I redrew was basically the capping. Everything else is just the same processes. Remodified, nothing complicated in Archicad. The only things that we're doing that are slightly tricky, if you're not experienced with it, is just all of the different types of construction detailing uh, that we're trying to work out on the fly. So that's what we want to create. We're creating that end, in this case of a skillion roof, the ridge or the, the top eave, and we need to then later do the other end with the gutter. Of course that's again very similar to this, but it's much lower profile pitch, and we have a raked suffete, not a flat ceiling lining happening in this instance. 